Hello, my name is Julian Smith and I'm Principal Surveyor at Hamble Marine Surveys. This is the third in a series of short videos I, I'll be taking just to illustrate key points on boats found during surveys. On this particular vessel, we're going to be looking at teak today. Um, this vessel is a Swedish made yacht that's over 20 years old and I wanted to just take this opportunity to point out a few key items that we as surveyors look for when surveying a boat of this age. The first thing on this boat is the teak, being a Swedish made boat, was probably around 10 to 12 millimetres thick when it was new. This can probably be seen up on the bow here, where you can see the thickness, the original thickness of the teak. In areas on this particular boat, sadly the teak is quite worn and it could have lost even as much as half its thickness in some areas. On this particular boat there are key items that have come to light. You can see here, a good illustration, that where the teak, uh, in this case the teak capping or tow rail, has been secured, uh, teak caps are then placed over the surface and you can see some of the caps are missing. The other key area that we look for is the sealant or the corking as it's called between the teak planks. You can see in some areas, and here's a good example, you can see where the corking has started to lift and in some areas, it's difficult to see, but you can see that the actual corking is now proud. So if you run your finger across, you can actually see how proud the, the corking is. And this is where the teak is actually worn, but the corking is not. So in areas such as this, you can see that the corking has lost its adhesion um, within the actual routed areas between the planks. And as a consequence of that, the corking is actually now starting to come loose and come out. Another area of interest on the particular boat is you can see up here on the bow where the mooring cleats have started to corrode at their base and sadly they've actually started to eat into the underlying teak. You can see this very clearly under the bottom of this teak, uh, under the bottom of this cleat. You can see where the cleat has started to corrode um, and then it's actually eaten into the teak underneath. You can see in this particular case, this cleat is going to need to be removed and replaced and the underlying teat will need to be renovated, possibly in the, uh, in the form of some of the planks will need to be replaced. Another tool that we have as surveyors is the sounding hammer. One of the things we, all, we always do is we tap test most of the deck and in this case you can see, just as an example, what you can hear here is sound teak that's well adhered to the underlying deck. And as we move forward, you can see that this plank here has lost slight underlying adhesion. And consequently, this, this plank here will probably need to be lifted and rebonded re to the underlying deck. So here you can hear the teak is sound. Here the teak is loose. A final word on teak, in particular the maintenance and cleaning of teak. A lot has been written and said on the manner, best, best manner in which to care for your teak, but I think it's largely agreed that the use of a soft bristle brush with a light detergent is the best way forward. A lot of people swear by washing the decks down with salt water um, and that can help to retain moisture and stop the teak splitting. Um, others swear by applications that you can put onto teak um, to protect it um, and others believe that the best course of action is allow to the teak to naturally weather and leave it in its natural form which is uh, this, this silver colour.